I've recently had an interesting conversation with a Muslim in the comment section of a video. I'll link to it over in the description box. It's interesting not because he said anything new, but because of his insistence that there was little culture and no education present within the Arab world before the rise of Islam. Of course, the way this entered into the conversation was with the usual ridiculous claim about so-called science in the Quran. Embryology, specifically. And when I pointed out that Hippocrates and Galen had already described the same thing to a similar level of detail a thousand years earlier, I got the expected response. Mohammed wasn't educated, he couldn't even read. And here's where I call bullshit. He may not have been able to read, I don't know, and frankly, it doesn't make any difference. I know the Muslims are for some reason very happy to claim that Mohammed was an uneducated hick with no culture, although their reasoning for this quite eludes me. But it is a fact that Mohammed was a merchant, and as such he must have had dealings with people from all over what was then the known world. It is also a fact that many places in the world, including the Arabic Peninsula, had great oral traditions at the time, and it isn't until within the last millennium or less that we've come to see the ability to read as a requirement for an education. And at the time, the ideas of Galen and Hippocrates were widespread, far beyond Greece. Throughout the entire Roman Empire, medicine was practiced by the standards set down by those two, among others. Mohammed was born in 570 CE. At this time, the Byzantine or East Roman Empire still covered the Mediterranean coast of the Middle East, the Sinai, Egypt, and North Africa, all the way over to Carthage. The Persian Sassanid Empire covered the east coast of the Arabic Peninsula, as well as the entire northern half of it, all the way into what is today Iraq, bordering up to the Byzantine Empire and following the coast of the Arabic Peninsula all the way down to what is today Yemen. Claiming that Mohammed conducted no trade with either of these two great empires throughout his life is simply ignorant. And claiming that he could not have gotten all these so-called scientific facts that he put in the Quran from the widespread knowledge available within these two empires, where we know for a fact that all this information was common knowledge, is just stupid. But for some reasons, Muslims have a tendency to bury any and all history before the Islamic takeover of whatever territory. In the Arab world, the time before Islam is referred to as Jahiliyyah, or the Days of Ignorance. So when I briefly pointed out that Mohammed didn't need to read in order to know these things, it came as little surprise when I got the following response. I'll let you read it yourself. Pause the video if you need to, I'm moving on. This is of course complete nonsense. The reason we see so little of pre-Islamic historical artifacts, buildings and literature from the Arabic Peninsula should be obvious. The Muslims fucking destroyed it all. And they're still working on it. Suppressing pre-Islamic history in Pakistan, suppressing the Zoroastrian minority in Iran, bombing ancient Buddha statues and so on and so forth. After 1400 years of suppressing the very idea of a pre-Islamic culture, the Islamic world has completely forgotten that there was a thriving culture across the Middle East for centuries before Muhammad was born. For a contemporary example of how the Islamic world tries to distort history, click the link over in the description box. Now, none of this is very surprising, but it is an interesting bit of insight into how the self-reinforcement of religious fanaticism works. To continue the history lesson just a little further, by the year 650, Muslims had taken complete military control of the Arabic Peninsula and had driven the Byzantine Empire into what is today Turkey. In 651, the Sassanid Empire was completely destroyed, and most of it became part of the Islamic Caliphate. And yet Muslims claim that Islam has never been spread by the sword. Yeah, right. Oh well, that's enough history for today. Peace.